If you're gonna hide anything anywhere, anywhere on or around your vagina when you have your period is a solid spot. Hi, I'm Jordan, and today I'm gonna to be telling you my tampon horror story. To set the scene, I was nine years old, which is pretty young. Lo and behold, I go to put my swimsuit on as I'm nine and splat, there's my period. I had heard about it. I'd heard about the mythical creature called Tom, but I didn't think it was gonna come. And I actually decided to hide it from my parents. Legitimate months go by and I still have not admitted to anyone, including my mother, that I started my period. I came up on my fourth grade field day and I had somehow smuggled pads up until that point. But I decided that if I'm gonna run the 300 meter race, I don't wanna have a squelchy pad. So I found a tampon in my school's bathroom and I decided this is it, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to graduate from a pad and use a tampon and I'm nine years old and it's field day and I'm gonna win this race. So I go into the bathroom and I have no idea what's going on. And if you can imagine a free tampon at a Lutheran elementary school, it, of course, is a cardboard tampon. I pull it out, I'm like, oh my God, this is so scary, I don't know what to do. Back then, too, we didn't have phones or anything these kids have. So, there was no instructions, I just went for it. I think when I realized I walked out of that bathroom, and this might be really TMI, but here we are, I could feel it sticking out of my underwear, and I just knew, I was like, I don't think that this is right, but I'm nine years old, I don't really know what a tampon is, Never really been down there, so we'll just go with it. I realized I completely inserted the tampon applicator in all, and then I ran around all day for field day with the applicator still in. So as you can imagine, super uncomfortable. I thought I did it right. I was like, whoa, tampons. Don't understand why everyone uses this instead of a pad. This is not more athletic. This is not more comfortable. I would like to think that I won the race. I have no idea. Let's say that I won the race because I finally decided as a nine-year-old to wear a freaking tampon instead of a pad. I finally admitted to my mom I started my period so she could actually help me learn how to use a tampon for further athletic endeavors. Now that I'm actually talking through this, it's like, oh, like pads would randomly just kind of show up and I could use them and it's like, I was nine, like there's no way I went to the store and bought them. And like, it, it's starting to all kind of fi like figure itself out that my mom knew. She just didn't want to out me and like embarrass me probably because she was a really good mom. <laughs> Hi, my name is Connie and today I'm going to tell you a tampon horror story. Not really mine, but my best friend's. And I'm very sorry. It's the ninth grade. We're women now. We're high schoolers, we know what's up, everything's great. I happen to have most of my classes with my best friend, which, as everybody knows, is like hitting the jackpot. We're already like so excited, nothing can possibly go wrong this year. So it was just like any other day. We're on AB schedule, I believe it was A block. It's our math class. Not a huge fan of math. I'm already kind of like zoning out. I see my friend, she's in the desk next to me. I see her get up and she goes and she gets a hall pass and she goes to leave. I don't think anything of it. Uh, I was gonna try to come up with a name to give her. I literally could only think of the name Frank. <laughs> That's like the most horrible. Hold up, no, I can do this. I can think oh, of a Jessica. girl name. Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. That is what we will call her. Jessica gets up, she goes out of the classroom. Don't really think much about it, I just keep working. All of a sudden I hear the door open again, so I look up. Jessica's face is paler than a ghost. She looks as if she has seen something truly horrible. She kind of like crouches down next to my desk and she's like, Connie, 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 I need your help. I'm already in like problem solving mode. Best friend issue, crisis, I'm there, we're going to figure it out. So I go up to my teacher, they let us both take hall passes together, which why? You should never let friends do that, but they totally let us. So we go to the bathroom, she goes in and she starts checking under the stalls to see if anybody's there. She pulls me in with her to the large, the handicap stall and she shuts the door and she goes, it broke. I go, what broke? The string, the string on my tampon broke. And I don't know how to get it out. This is one of her first times putting in a tampon. We're like ninth grade and we thought we knew everything. We do not know everything. We don't know anything. So in our little ninth grade brains, we think that's gonna be stuck up there forever and Jessica is going to die. Jessica's panicking, I'm now panicking, and she looks me in the eyes and she says, you have to help me. And that's when I said, Jessica, Put your foot up on that toilet and put your other foot on the ground. We're gonna get that thing out of you. She's so panicked that of course she can't like get anything to come out. So I was like, just go look in my eyes, look at my eyes, breathe with me. So we took some like calming breaths and I was like, if 
push comes to shove, I'm gonna reach up in there and I'm gonna get that thing out of you. I am your best friend and I will do this for you. So now we're gonna like push, cause that was our plan. We were like, okay, maybe if we like push. She starts to push and she's like, you have to look. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Our friendship is at a new level. This is what is now happening. So I look and I can see that it's right there. And there's like still a little bit of the string. It was like a holy grail. There was like, ah! her, she is open and there is a string there. Jessica, there's a string. I was like, there's a string, we can get it out, we can get it out. And she's like, are you serious, are you serious? So she looks down and she manages to grab it and yank it out and we survived. So that's how I saved my friend's life. Also, why only use pads? Cause that really terrified me. Hi, I'm Merle and today I'm gonna tell you a tampon horror story. So my tampon story is not necessarily my story, but it is my grandmother's and it is much more interesting than anything that's ever happened to me with a tampon. My grandmother, Sandy, was just this incredibly powerful, beautiful, strong woman. She was a model back in her day. It's legit, she was legit. She used to like beat men off of the baseball bat. She was always telling me and my cousin all of these stories about men that would become obsessed with her. And I'm like, now I know where I get it. She has stories of men scaling buildings for her, like screaming outside of her apartment for her, showing up in the middle of other dates and throwing money on the table. She's got all these crazy, crazy, crazy stories. Anyway, she was dating this royalty in Spain. She didn't give me specifics, but we don't really need them. You get the picture. He saw her like by a fountain and he was like, you, you. <laughs> I think that's probably all he said. And she was like, Sure. So she went along with him. He would buy her lavish jewelry and clothes and they went on all these magnificent trips. She got to see parts of the world she would have never seen. She didn't come from a lot of money. Of all of the things that he gave her, she loved this ring. She loved, 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 loved this one ring. She thought it was beautiful and uh, she cherished it. So they dated for a year. But you know, as some of these bigger relationships that are really passionate at the start, they tend to go out in burning flames. This man was furious at her. He thought that she was cheating on him. She might've been cheating on him, I don't know. Either way, he was so mad at her, he ended up chasing her out of his palace, grabbing the necklace off her throat. There's pearls spilling all over the courtyard. He grabs like the shawl he got her, he rips it in half. He's like, I'm gonna take every last thing I've ever gave to you. You can't, you don't deserve it. So he chases her to this bridge, right? Because there's a bridge in the in the palace, the terrace, in the moat, like what? I don't know. This isn't how my life is, but like I gotta work on some things. So anyway, this guy's on this bridge with her and he's like, give me the earrings, give me the necklace. He's taking the stuff off. And then that like tiara, I've made that part up, but I feel like she must have had a tiara. She's like, I know he's gonna want this ring. She doesn't wanna remember this man. This man's probably a madman. And so she's like, I'm okay with getting rid of all my stuff, but not this ring, not this ring that she's loved so much. She, it's her favorite piece of jewelry. So what did she do? I mean, what any of us would have done. She tied it to her tampon string because he's not gonna look there. Anyway, so she tied it to her tampons during the thing is like, I don't need to illustrate that for you. The guy comes up to her, he's like convinced he's got everything off of her. And uh, yeah, she got to catch, she got to keep the ring. And you know what? Who, in, who inherited that ring? <laughs> Me. This is the ring that was tied to my grandmother's tampon string. And I could not be more proud to wear it, so. Thanks, Grandma.